Before I get into the story, I'm going to briefly explain what kami are. Kami are often translated as god, but a better translation would be spiritual being slash entity. Many kami are like what we think of as gods. There are storm kami, sun kami, and even kami that created the universe. However, there are also kami of natural features, both large and small. Everything from mountains to rocks could be kami. Kami are like people of the invisible world, a world which is part of our own, but we just can't see it until we die. Or unless you get spirited away and made to work in a bathhouse. Anyway, that's the briefest of summaries I can give in a paragraph about kami. Now let's get into the story. The beginning starts off as many do, when there was nothing but a void known as chaos. And from chaos came the first three kami. Those three kami created the earth, and then even more kami the first of whom were genderless. But as time went on, husband and wife, brother and sister duos started emerging. A notable husband and wife duo were Izanagi and Izanami. As they stood above the earth, Izanagi took his spear and dipped it into the sea, swishing the water around. When he took the spear out of the water, every droplet crystallized and became an island of Japan. Izanami and Izanagi then went down to earth to create even more kami. The two of them got married and they started the ritual to make children. Their first child, Hiruko, was born ugly and boneless, so he was abandoned by his parents. But don't worry about him too much, he ended up surviving and being really popular among fishermen. They tried making another child, and this time it came out fully formed, but he was just really small, and he became an island off the coast of Japan called Awa. Due to his tininess, they still weren't impressed with their children, so before they tried making another child, they asked the creator Kami what they were doing wrong. The creators told them they were performing the child-making ritual wrong. Izanami was speaking first in the ritual, but that was incorrect, so the next time they did it, Izanagi spoke first. They repeated this process many times, and Izanami had a lot of children. Some boys, some girls, and some more islands. Eventually, Izanami gave birth to the fire god Kagusuchi, although she suffered from major burns and ended up dying either during childbirth or shortly after. Izanagi was so heartbroken and enraged that he killed the baby Kagusuchi. From Izanagi's tears, a few more kami emerged. Izanagi did not want to go on living without his wife, so he ventured down to the land of the dead, Yomi, to find Izanami. When he found her, Izanami told him that she already ate some of the fruit from the underworld, and because of that, she was no longer allowed to leave. Izanami said she would try negotiating with the gods of Yomi so she could leave, though. Eventually, Izanami returned and explained that she would be able to return with Izanagi to the overworld, but she had to begin the process of leaving Yomi first before they could actually leave. Izanagi agreed to this, but he got impatient and grew suspicious, wondering if the kami of Yomi were tricking him. The longer he waited, the more he wanted to see his wife, and eventually he couldn't resist temptation and lit a lantern to see the area around him. And what he saw horrified him. Izanami was covered in maggots and decay, as if her corpse had been rotting for months. He screamed and ran for his life, and Izanami, heartbroken, ashamed, and enraged, ran after him. Izanagi threw everything he could behind them to slow them down. Some yomi fruit, rocks, anything. When he finally returned to the land of the living, he sealed the entrance to Yomi shut with a boulder. Izanami cursed him and said she would kill a thousand people every day. Izanagi responded by saying that he would create a thousand people every day. This act dissolved their marriage, and it was the last time the two ever spoke to each other. Izanagi felt disgusting and impure after his trip to Yomi, and went into a river to bathe and purify himself. While there, he started to cry again about his dead wife, and from his tears emerged three of the most important kami in the Shinto pantheon, the sun kami, Amaterasu, and the sometimes boy, sometimes girl, moon deity, Sukuyomi, both emerged from his tears. It was also one of those ugly cries where, like, he has snot tripping from his nose, and from that snot, the storm god Susanoo emerged. Anyway, that's the Shinto creation story, a story found in both the Nihon Shoki and Kojiki, I am so sorry if I mispronounced those, which are collections of Shinto stories and legends, along with some historical emperor's reigns, both compiled in the 700s CE. The book was written to connect the emperor's legitimacy to the kami and heaven. 
Fun fact, a lot of medieval histories did this too. They connected their history to the book of Genesis as a way of legitimizing their reigns. These stories are cool, but it's good to remember they don't exist in a vacuum. They can be used for righteous reasons like preserving culture, or nefarious reasons like propaganda. That's a good thing to keep in mind when thinking critically about these stories. Anyway, thank you for watching, leave a like if you enjoyed, and subscribe if you want to see more. I have a Discord where I post memes and updates on videos, and a coffee where you can tip me if you feel so inclined. And until next time, have a good one.